Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Deadly Kindies activity session. My name is Kendi. I work with the Deadly Kindies team and I also uh, run the early learning program over at the uh, Birthing and Community Moms and Bobs Hub at Salisbury. So shout out to everybody over there. And today I've got a special friend with me. My name is Patrick Johnson, uh, Deadly Choices Ambassador. Uh, really great to be here, especially to talk a little bit about uh, insects, but also about what we can do to create things while you're at home as well. That's right. Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, before we start our sessions, we always start with uh, acknowledgement of country that we're on. So if you're at kindy or at home, you can do this one with us too. And you get your body ready and you use your hands for this one. So let's go. Here is the land. Here is the sky. Here are my friends and here am I. We acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we play, discover and learn. We're gonna to cut to some ads now. So see you back here soon with your paint and some cardboard. Thank you guys, see you soon. Hey Mob, enrollments for Kindy are still open. If you have any questions for us, please message us on our Deadly Kindy's Facebook page. We are still here during this tough time we're all facing in the community. There will be some deadly activities posted on our page in the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for updates. For more information, visit www.facebook.com slash deadlykindies. Hey Mob, Patrick Johnson here. Telehealth is a deadly way to access healthcare. It is now available across all our clinics in Southeast Queensland. A telehealth appointment brings the clinic to your home. You and your doctor will be alone in an online consult room. It's just like being in the clinic. All you need to get started is a device with a camera that's connected to the internet. If you're not sure whether you have the right device, ask the clinic mob. They can help you get started. To book your telehealth appointment, give your local clinic a call. To find your nearest clinic, visit delichoices.com.au. Welcome back everybody. Thank you again for joining in. Uh, we're gonna have a quick yarn before we start. I uh, just wanted to ask if anybody follows us on our YouTube. We have a deadly YouTube channel that you can find our past uh, learning experiences on. We also have our Facebook that you can um, get in, involved and talk about maybe what country you're on. Uh, we have different competitions each week. So if you make anything that you see on Deadly Kindies, make sure you send a picture in. We love to see what you're doing and added bonus, you can win some really cool stuff. We'd love to send that out to you. Uh, also, we're gonna talk a little bit about staying healthy. That's really important at the moment. Hey, Patrick. Really important because I think through the isolation, sometimes at home, you sort of maybe not doing as much exercise or you're not doing much. Yeah. Um, but it's really important to still keep healthy. Yep. Um, and even for myself and my son at home, he's only three, three years old. Yeah. Um, but we're doing a little bit of cooking classes together. Oh, so he deadly. can add in whatever he wants. So yep. I have a list of like a tomatoes, you know, cheese and really some fresh fruit and veggies. Beautiful. So he adds in what he wants yeah. to be cooked. So it's just something that we sort of do at home to really make sure we share in the moment, yeah. um, but we always be healthy. That's really good. A good reminder for everyone too. Often when we think about health, we think about, you know, medicine and, and keeping clean, but also too, your diet is so important. So keeping healthy, having lots of fresh, fresh produce is the way to go. We also want to talk about too, washing our hands, uh, you know, social distancing. I know, um, you know, it's important at the moment if you've got your mask, wear your mask when you're out and about if you can, and also sanitizing and cleaning your hands is, is really important um, at the moment. So let's start our session. We're gonna start with our book, Insects. So this one is by the very deadly Auntie Wendy. Shout out to Auntie Wendy. Hopefully you're watching here today. And we've got, I think it's the Kawanyama um, State School students. So they um, did the illustrations in this book. It's, it's so beautiful. They've done such a great work, um, great job of that. And um, Kawanyama actually means the place of many waters. So beautiful place. Um, 
when we talk about insects, we think about the animals on the land on our country and people often think about koalas or kangaroos and all the cute and cuddly animals. But what's really important to remember is all the creatures that Mother Earth put on our country uh, are just as important and play a crucial role in the environment. So we're going to learn a bit about some insects here in the book and we'll talk more about that after. So let's get into the story now. Thanks, How Patrick. cool is that? Insects got little ants here yeah. and they got little bees. So really important. If you see a beetle lying on its back, turned upside down, can't get back on track. So we have a little be two little beetles here. One is on the ground walking, but there's one, unfortunately, that's flipped over. Oh, stuck on his back. Oh, and it's just, it's trying to get up. Pick it up carefully. Help is on its way. Be glad you helped a beetle today. Oh, cool. The beetle's very happy now. It can go wherever it wants to. If you see a butterfly lying on the ground, you might hear it weeping. Oh. It's an awful sound. Oh, you can see a little butterfly here. It's weeping. I wonder what's wrong. Hmm. Oh, no. A kid pulled its wings off and now it can't fly. Without their wings, butterflies die. Oh, that's sad. That's very sad. We don't sad. want the butterfly to die, do we? No. Crickets, caterpillars, moths, and flies. Oh, they're all here. There's uh, flies and caterpillars and moths and crickets. I wonder what crickets, what do they do? At night, what do they sound like? I can hear lots of crickets around my place at night time. Maybe sometimes you can go out at night at home and have a see if you can hear some of the crickets sometimes. Yeah, cicadas, beetles and dragonflies. <gasps> How cool is that? I see the cicadas on the tree there, mm -hmm. up the top. Cicadas make, are here, yes. They make a beautiful sound too. You hear them in the springtime, summertime, all and the different seasons. Beautiful dragonflies as well and beetles. Beetles, bees, sorry, termites, and satyrs too. Oh, where's the bees? Oh, there's the bees. Can you see the bees? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bees. Wow, that's a lot of bees and termites under the ground. We love insects, don't you? There's some more there. Can you see that? what insects are there? What do you think are there? There's a dragonfly, there's butterflies. Oh, so many insects to see. If you see a grasshopper in your room, try not to worry, it'll leave pretty soon. So where can we see the grasshopper? Can you see the grasshopper? Oh. I can see the grasshopper up in the bedroom. Whoa. Up here, can you see him? It's a green fella up there. Must have got in through the window or something. Yeah. Oh. Grasshoppers like the garden or park, but sometimes they get lost in the house when it's dark. Can you see it? Where are they? They're following the light. They think maybe it's the moonlight. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing. So if you're not using the lights at home at night time, you can turn them off. Cool. If you see a, a line of ants on their way home, try not to step on them and leave them alone. Really important because I've taught my son to just watch the ants. Don't That's disturb true. them, let yeah. them watch them what they do because a lot of times you'll see them actually carrying a bit of food home so they can eat so really important so they bring all the food home you can see here all the ants they collect food and bring them back home that's a great tip patrick i like that one ants are really tiny and sometimes hard to see so if you see them let them be just like you said patrick that you tell tell your son just have a watch 
watch what they're doing. You might find up there's, there's something up to something interesting. And sometimes you can follow them and see what they're doing. Yeah. Sometimes they're on the up in the tree or in the bushes. But it's interesting when they're actually behind each other, so you can follow them. But don't touch them, don't hurt them. It's really important to respect the ants and the bees and insects and everyone. Crickets, caterpillars, moths and flies. Can we see where the caterpillars are? Where are they? Ah, is there only one caterpillar or two? I think there's two, isn't there? You can count them on the one, tall grass, flower. Two. And the stem there. Wow. Cicadas, beetles and dragonflies. Where's the beetles? We love watching beetles to see them on the trees sometimes because they, they actually stay very still. They do. So you actually have to look really hard to see some of the times the beetles because they actually blend in. They call that camouflage. So they can't see you, they hide from their predators. But if you look very closely, sometimes you'll see beetles in a tree. Bees, termites, and slaters too. Oh, there's so many here. So many. Whoa, there's ants, there's bees, there's slaters, there's termites. What are the termites doing here? Are they eating? Looks termites like eat, it. eat wood, don't they? Yeah, the rotten wood. Mmm, yum, yum. And look at all the bees, very important, all the bees. We love insects. Don't you? You love insects? Oh, that's the end, but really important with insects and mother nature and all the insects you might see, it's all about respect. That's right. And we've got something to show you here today. Um, we're gonna to have a quick talk about some insects that we've got here. Um, do you wanna hold this one, Patrick? Whoa, what's that? Whoa, what is that? That one is a native stingless bee or a sugar bag bee, you might know them as. We have got a little video here that you can watch and these bees are from my garden. So I was lucky enough to have a native bee hive in my yard and wow. those bees made some beautiful honey. The trees that were nearby that were getting pollinated were lemon myrtle trees. And when we split the hive, I was able to taste some of the honey and it tasted like the lemon myrtle. So it was like a special lemon honey made by these amazing little bees. Yum, yum. Can you see them here? Oh, there so we many. go, got a slow-mo shot of them there. And this was them swarming the hive. Sometimes when they're cleaning out the hive, getting all the mess out, they come out. Sometimes when they're too hot, too cold. What's the sound do they make? Is it a different sound than normal bees or just the same it's, buzzing? It's quite similar buzzing, but uh, because they're smaller than the, the honeybees, the big bees, it's a little bzzz and lots. There were so many, so lots of them there. So you, can you do that at home and sort of try it? Just go bzzz. Very deadly bee yeah, sound, bees. love that. Whoa, look out. Uh, we've also got here a uh, honey ant. <gasps> honey ant? Now, Does that, that taste like honey? Yeah, this is a very, some mob eat these deadly honey ants, very special delicacy. Now I haven't tried one of these before, but some of you may have eaten these. We go digging for honey ants, very special. Have you tried one of these before? Yes, I have. When I was in the Northern Territory, that's yeah. where we digged it into the ground. And some of our elders sort of showed us um, yeah. to go honey uh, hunting, which is really, really hard because you've got to dig and take the time. But yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah, that's very right. Nice. So they'll use a digging tool. Hmm. You may have seen them using to get that, break that ground up. And something really important to remember is that, um, you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people really look after the land, making sure that there's, you know, more honey ants for the next generations to come, never taking more than what they need. 
so very special about conservation and, and very clued on to the land and on which that we all live on. So, Which is very important because sometimes when we go to the shops, we see the shelves and think, oh, I'll have that, that and that. Mm -hmm. But will you eat all that? A lot of times you won't. So we only take what we want. And it's really important because when you want to eat and have the right food, it's important to have healthy food. And a lot of it back on country. And even when you go to the shops, you can get healthy food as well. That's true. A couple more uh, little insects that we have here. This one you may know. This one's a witchetty grub or bardi grub. Whoa. Go digging for these ones too in the roots of the trees. Have you tried one of these before, Patrick? Yes, I have. Yeah, me oh. too. And what they taste of, was it? What's it what, can you tell us what it tastes like? I liked it. I thought it was a little bit almondy almost. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it, it was quite good. I, I did like it. At first I wasn't sure, but then when I tried it, I thought, hey, this is good. And also too, really good um, healthy food, mm. you know, good fats and keep you going throughout the day. Um, really yummy this guy here so and last of all uh, this is what we're doing our painting of today this is a really special moth you want to hold one of those Patrick wow big moths yeah that's the bogong moth now this is a very important uh, moth to a lot of Aboriginal people uh, from Queensland New South Wales right down uh, Kurima Victoria uh, they uh, roast them I used to have big ceremonies up in the Alps, the migration up into the mountains and would have big ceremonies, have a big feed, all the moths, millions of them. So have to look after them. I haven't tried one of these before. What about you? I haven't. When I was actually living in Canberra in the ACT, I actually played for a football club called the Bogon Moths. Hey, there you go. And because of, they used to travel to actually um, eat this as part of a ceremony and part of uh, going up the hill. Um, on their trek so it's a part of initiation but it's also a part of their culture keeping strong so yeah, bogon must very important yes that's right and as i said always looking after the land and looking after the animals not taking too much and remembering uh, insects are so important not just the koalas not just the kangaroos but insects play a really important role to our mob and have you know for our ancestors for thousands and thousands of years so if you do see an insect look after it and think about hey this insect belongs on this land too we are all a part of the land beautiful all righty so we're going to get into our artwork there this who, one who loves artwork oh I do. I do yes this one a special word for butterflies and moths is a lepidoptera that's a scientific word say that again please lepidoptera can you say that you guys try that at home Try it. Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera. I even had to try that one a couple of times <laughs> myself. Hey, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so this one you may have, you may know, also known as butterfly painting or symmetry painting. It's quite popular at kindy. I know I've done this one when I was a kindy teacher. And I think even when I was in kindy myself, long time ago now, we did these special paintings. So is this and something I can do at home? Absolutely. Yes? All you need is paint. And a piece of cardboard, thick or paper, just thick paper. The only thing is the thin paper could rip. We use a, quite a little bit of, of paint there. So um, just make sure you've got some thick stuff there to make. And we'll get into it and we can show you how to do it. So let's get ready. I will put here, so we've got some paint in our egg carton. You can just tip it out of the container as well. So it's probably um, important also to have some protective gear. Don't wear your best clothes. Don't put your favourite outfit no, on. When you want to do painting, because even my son who does <laughs> painting, all his clothes and every, everything is all painted, which is yeah. great. But then, of course, sometimes we can't get it out of the wash. Yeah. So make sure you can wear an old uh, shirt or something yep. or have a sort of a, something to put over yourself so you don't get all paint over your nice clothes. That's right. So we're going to Whoa. use spoons today yep. to put the blobs of paint on. So, so can we have teaspoons and also yeah. the bigger spoons if you want? That's right. Can we and use other, like a fork or anything like you that? You could. You know what? Yeah. You could use your fingers. It's up to you. You, you know how creative you can be. Uh, you could just tip the paint straight on there, which <laughs> I'll show you that as well. We can do some of that. 
but let's get into our painting, our Lepidoptera paintings. So you'll have to teach me how do we do this because we've so, got a blank sheet like this. That's right. We're going to probably turn it over because there was a over. little picture on there. So this okay. one's just a manila folder. You might have um, some of these at, at yep. kindy from the office. I know that we used to use lots of these when I worked at a kindy and instead of throwing them out, this would be an amazing idea. Um, you know, you could cut Ooh. the person's name off the top and use this one to do your deadly artwork for your moth or your butterfly there. And if you don't have one of these, you can have a, just a blank sheet. Yeah, that's yep. right. You could use anything. If you've got some old scrap paper, do it on the other side. Um, recycling and sustainability is very important. So let's get into it. I'm going to start off with some brown. So what we'll do is we'll just do some big blobs. And you can try and do it in a bit of a shape of a, of a, a butterfly or moth there. So anywhere I can just Yeah, blob just it. keep it on one side because we're going to fold over the other side there. So it could be a little bit like you know, dot, dot Yeah, stuff, yeah, see? you could do a little bit of that if you like. Yeah. Or bigger blobs yeah. or smaller ones. Whoa. It's exciting because you, you're creating an artwork but you don't necessarily know how it's going to turn out. So you can use different colours. Yep. And really if important. you wanted to do, you know, butterflies are, are quite colourful creatures. So instead of maybe doing, like we're going to do the bogong moth here today, instead of doing that, you could do, uh, you know, maybe some orange, monarch butterfly, um, lots of different butterflies that you can do, different colours there. So. so be careful when you do this, don't flick it too hard no. because it might flick up and hit <laughs> you in the eye. Probably a good one to, uh, you could do it outside, hey. But, oh, we put down this, this uh, mat here today for us to... Um, to use there. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of red. Red. So always on just one side. It's really important That's just right. on one side just to put it. You can put it anywhere you like just on that there. one side. Really important. I'm going to go for a little bit more dark brown I reckon. Who's doing this at home? Is this pretty cool isn't it? Are you it's joining gonna create in? It. Look at this. Also too, here we've got these ones, Patrick. I'm gonna put in a little bit of uh, this bronze color. Let's make Ooh. it a bit shiny. And put a spot. We've sung another song before. Put a, well, we, put, we did shapes, but the song is put a spot over here and a spot over there. There we go. I'm gonna be careful. Oh, I, don't I think you have to take the lid off that oh, one. I, I don't feel like put it's- Put it all uh, out. Yeah. Oof. Don't want to go but everywhere. But that one's quite runny, so just a little just bit. Just be think. warned. Oh. That's good. Very careful. Just a little bit. And I might borrow that one too. Yes. And I think I'm done, ready to go. <sighs> now that. you can always add a little bit of water to your paint, and that way it will. Runny paint is probably best for this one, because um, then it, you can really spread it out all over your page. So that all look right. good. Does that look good for yeah, everyone? Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's my first creation. Beautiful. My first painting. So then we fold it back on top of itself. So it's important to have the blank one, which is this one here, and fold it over. That's not right. Not the other one fold because it's going to all run off. Very good. Good tip there, Patrick. There we go. And Ooh. then you can push it in towards the middle. Because if you push it out, it may come out this way. Push it do I in. do it softly or really hard? I think hard would probably be best. And you know what I like to do too when you go in a bit of a circular motion, round and around, and you can pat it because that will spread that paint out in there. Give it a good pat. You could make a little beat. You could count it out. One, two, three, four, five. Up and down. And maybe you can try to write your name. So I've oh, just written yeah. my name here. Yeah. So I can try to get everything. So if you can, try to just write your name. It'd be like invisible, oh. my name. Pretty deadly. That's really good for um, our literacy and language skills mm. there, writing your name. You could have even written your name in the paint and that's seen. Right. Yeah. I know whose it is because when somebody says, who's that beautiful painting? Yeah. I can say it's mine. That's right. Too deadly. Are you go. ready for the big reveal? What do Here you we think? go. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Dun, Open dun, it dun. up. Oh, Whoa. wow. How cool is that? Do you like that, guys? Look Does at that our look moths. like a butterfly? Is that like butterfly I think wings? I might go <gasps> this way. I think mine looks like a butterfly. Hey, that's the too wings. deadly. Hey? 
And that's my first butterfly. How cool is that? And you know what, when you cut them out, you can stick some little antennae on the top. I know some moths, I got something here too. I'm not sure if you've seen these moths, Patrick. I think the bogong moth has it too, but they have, it almost looks like eyes. And do you yes, know that's to warn away the predators? So you could stick, I wonder if that will stay there with the paint. I could use some glue. And why do you so, think that is? You know why? Because if a predator is sneaking up, they think the moth is looking at them so they can't sneak up. So that's why that's they right. have it on their wings. Uh -huh. Really important. Look, hey, I'm watching you. Don't eat me. Yeah, that's it. But also too, I did read that the bogong moth is a very important source of food, not just for mob down that way, but for um, sugar gliders. Mm. So that's very important. I think they're even endangered. So, um, you know, looking after the land is not just us. You know, the animals too are really relying on these, on these beautiful insects. So look after the insects too. So then you can show this to your mum or dad or to your family and maybe put it on the fridge or on the wall that you've created this. That's right. Put your name on there. Yes. You could take it in. If you've done this one at home, yeah, go and show your friends. Take it into kindy. Tell them, hey, I did this deadly artwork that we can do here too. Because it's as you saw, it was very simple. Just need some paint and some paper or cardboard. Too deadly. Thanks, Patrick. We can put our artwork down here. Ooh. Remove the paint out the way. And last of all, to finish up our session today, we're going to do a little rhyme about bees. Bees. So this one is five little bees. And what's a bee sound do? What do they do? Do you remember from before? We saw those bees that were in my backyard making that sugar bag honey. They all went bzzz. So Lots try that at home. Do really loud. Bzzz. Very ah. good. All right. So let's get ready. One little bee <gasps> flew bee. and flew. He met a friend and that made two. Two, two little bees. <gasps> Busy as could be. Along came another and that made... Whoa, three. Three, bees. three little bees wanted one more, Bzzz. found one soon, and that made four. Bzzz. Four little bees going to the hive, saw their brother, and that made five. Whoa, so many bees. Five little bees Whoa. working every hour. Bzzz. Buzz away bees, buzz, buzz, buzz. Find another flower. Wow, <gasps> look at all those bees. They're checking out my artwork. Hey. Oh, hey. Do you like them? Yes. You like my artwork, don't you? And they're a special native bee too. They're not the ones that I had in my yard. Those ones are the band, uh, blue banded bee. So they're Australian animal too. And they make honey too? I should have looked that up, but probably yes. <laughs> Not too sure, but they would be pollinators. Yes, definitely. Really important. Good for the flowers, good for the environment. Alrighty, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining in for another session of Deadly Kindies. We're going to sing our goodbye song now. And this one is, uh, you can sing, I'm a little Murray kid or I'm a little curry kid. Um, this one is by Lola on the Deadly Kindies team. Shout out to Lola. Thank you so much for writing this song. So deadly. Um, and she's a proud curry big kid. So she likes to sing curry kid like me too. But today uh, we're going to sing Murray Kids. So get ready. I'm a little Murray kid, strong and proud. Here I stand on my sacred ground. When I get all fired up, then I shout, I'm too deadly, hey, look out. Very good. Thank you again for joining in, friends. We hope to see you again soon. Keep watching, check us out on YouTube, and always following us on Facebook too. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.